Okay, we're going to start out with the Hobbs box. This is the reversing gear box uh, used uh, to go forward and reverse at the same speed, uh, being that there was not very many places to turn the thing around. Uh, according to the record history books that uh, Hobbs uh, invented it himself. So, uh, take a little in-depth look here. Here's your gear, uh, gear clusters. Uh, you have a input main cluster, an output main cluster, and then you have an idler cluster. This one here being your output. This is your output shaft. This is uh, where your drive shaft and everything would, would hook up. And come to the front. And this is your input. This uh, would mount has a cone that would mount to the transmission right here. And here you can see the this being your main, this being your idler, and this being your uh, output main. And let's just take a minute and look at the box itself. The box itself has been handmade itself. Uh, you can see where the come up here. You can see where the uh, it's been seamed together. Two end plates. You see where the holes and everything. Right? We'll take a more in-depth look here at that in a little bit. But everything, every you can see, it, it didn't come out of nothing. It was absolutely hand manufactured. So let's take a quick look here how everything works. Uh, therefore and again your transmission will be mounted here. The engine and transmission and everything we're going to turn and forward are going to turn uh, looking at the front of this we're going to turn clockwise turn like this. So as the engine and transmission and everything turns that direction you can see all your gears and everything here rotate. That in turn, slide that bearing back in there. That in turn is going to this. Now this being this is your output shaft here. This is where your drive shaft hooks. So let's see. Transmission in one of the forward gears, and then the Hobbs box uh, forward gear selected turns this forward. The output would turn counterclockwise in order to turn the rear wheels in the forward direction. Okay, so now come back and see this lower cluster here, if you can see it is the selectable gear. Turn the light on here. This one back here is the selectable gear. This is what's moved when the uh, gear shifter on the Hobbs box is moved. If you watch it, it'll slide. Go do with your hands. There we go. That engages it into this gear cluster here. And we'll come back over here to our output shaft. Here we turn. See the I'm turning the transmission or the I'm turning the input shaft the same direction I was, but the output shaft of the rear wheels is turning the opposite direction. Pretty amazing as far as I'm concerned. I see all this, everything you see here come out of something different. Nothing is out of one particular thing. You see where they've cut, this has had another set of gears on here and they've cut it out for clearance. Same thing right down here. 
but uh, the biggest drawback I found on the Hobbs box is it just wasn't set up precisely enough. There's too much. See, they use this is a piece of galvanized steel tubing, maybe maybe a bore tube. Who knows from the railroad uh, that they've used as a spacer, and it's just not quite precise enough. Uh, and you can see where get in depth here. You can see where the the gear is is chipped and stuff. <clears throat> Two things are going on here. One, the operators have been trying to shift the Hobbs box with it, the vehicle still moving, trying to switch directions, and it's and it's grounding gears. And two, the movement of the the gears. See all these you got up with this spacer here not being enough have it's got a lot of si uh, side movement that allows the, some of these gears to contact the other ones and it's caused some of the damage which ain't no big deal there ain't nothing here you know beyond repair you know we can always uh, add some material here with the welder or whatever and then file everything back down and it'll be running like brand new uh, the only bad gear I found is right here And you see there's one little piece of a tooth missing with there for and again I can add material to and, and reshape the, the tooth. Uh, a couple of other things. Here's your shift fork. This is what sets over that large cluster down in there. And this is attached to this shift rod. which slides through here. And this is hooked to the large lever and it's moved back and forth which moves this shifter fork back and forth which slides the, the main cluster inside there. So to me it is, it is real amazing that they was able to construct something like this it, and it works damn good as far as I'm concerned. Here's some of the, the end caps that they manufacture. This covers the bearings and uh, so forth. Who knows what they're off of. Uh, trains, planes, automobiles, it's hard to sell. This is this is the uh, cone I was talking about. It fits on here. This is a solid piece of brass that they've cut out and drilled just as a spacer. So we'll look at it. There's the house box. There's definitely nothing beyond repair there. I'm I'm really really pleased with that. Uh, we'll come over here to the rear end now. This is the ring and pinion out of the rear end. Uh, Counting the teeth on it, um, there's 12 on the pinion in the rear and housing, and there's 40 here, so that equates to a, a gear of about 334, which is about in the middle of the gear range, not too high, not too low, which probably worked out good for them. Uh, and this, supposedly this thing was parked in 78, 77, 78, because they thought it had a broke axle. Well, I know now why. I originally didn't see nothing wrong in the rear, but I found out why. This right here is a gear. This is where your axle fits in. This is the splines of, where the splines of the axles fit in. It allows it, when this turns, turn the axle. Normally, this would have fit in here, and you'd had four individual spider smaller gears right here that would have turned on this larger gear below and then you had another set in the top of this part and your other axle comes in from here and uh, that made up the differential usually a differential one wheel does all your pulling normally the right rear um, but the railroad needed both wheels to pull to get optimum pulling capacity so they took the four little small gears off here they dropped the gear here and they brazed it with brass to this outer carrier which attached it to this solidly so anytime this turns the axle turns and they did the same thing on the other side for the other axle but here's here's what popped 
32 years ago. This is another gear, just like I showed on the other side, it had teeth in it and the little small uh, spider gears would have turned on this. It fits down here like so. They brazed it just the same, but this braze popped loose. And uh, that would have prevented it from, without the other little spiders and everything, it would have prevented it from pulling at all. Um, and that would have been the right side, so uh, there's why they thought they had a broke axle. Which, uh, this is not, not no big deal either. More likely I will uh, put this in the lathe and turn this brass off of it in the, the lathe and then we'll clean this up down in here and drop it back down in there and uh, use a MIG welder and weld everything back up solidly and we'll have two wheels pulling again. So uh, not nothing way beyond repair. Uh, of course, we got the bent brake rods and stuff we got to fix, but that come at a later time. And here's the uh, the shifter for the transmission. It's the the only real bad part I found transmission. It's just so rusted, and I just really don't believe it's going to be able to be gotten apart to be able to salvage it. But hopefully, the transmission coming with the flathead engine will have a, uh, a similar transmission anyway, where maybe we can salvage some parts off it and transfer them to this one. We'll take a quick peek over here at the uh, frame and everything. We'll look at this the other how, half of the differential. Right in here is where the ring gear and everything sets. The bearing sets in this race right here. Here's your pinion gear. This is what's turned by the drive shaft. You see it turns and that in turn turns the pinion. Get a good shot there. That's the other side of the rivets that you see there where the axle tube is riveted to the rear end housing itself. That good thick axle tubes will be perfect for cutting and, and sleeving uh, should we choose to navigate it. And here's a good look at the frame as it sets. As of this moment it's stripped. And the bow and everything is ready to come out. It just hasn't been actually set out yet. We'll look down in here at the transmission real quick before my battery dies. There's the gears and everything in transmission. I say it's got a lot of rust and debris on it, but nothing's broken, nothing's tore up. I mean, just a big matter of just taking everything out and cleaning it up. That <coughs> That's where we're at right now. And uh, we'll see you on the next video. Thanks for watching.